And as we look across the way to the 40th gate, the gate of deliverance, the path of denial, we're now looking that we have this double differentiation in that path that operates at the 40, because we still have that one, two, and three, four, five, and six, this trigram duality that we have here. We have the inner process, one, two, three. We have the outer process, four, five, six. If we look at the lower trigram, we look at the word struggle here because struggle is about relationships to the elders. Struggle. So this is the bridge that we almost cross in the one, two, and three line qualities. You're going to resonate with struggle. So link struggle personally, one, two, and three. Struggle personally, one, two, and three. When we look at the upper trigram, we're now looking at the transpersonal process of gate 40, where we see the word liberation, and we're dealing with the tribe. It's liberation from the influence, demands, or elders. We'll go through these one at a time. Let's start with the one. So we've seen then that we have this dualistic binary between the line qualities of the lower and upper trigram in that there's struggle on the lower and liberation in the upper. So we're dealing within the tribe struggle at the foundation with this gate 40, gate of deliverance, the path of denial brings struggling with the rules of the elders or not remember all these or nots because everything again is a binary this and that just like up and down black and white yin and yang there's always this duality inherent within the construct of our genetic matrix you can have a 4037 that is very clearly in the god game and you can have a 4037 that is definitely not. There's always this binary. And here in the first line, we've got the struggle with the rules of the elders. So remember that the 40th gate is here to be recognized for work, to work, to deliver on the promise of what it means to be living in community in the tribal context. 37s are very good at sitting in the church, but the 40 is the one that has to build the thing build the church, build the schools, build the institutions, build the company. In business, the 40 is the foreman, the person who delivers on the product or the service. So at least they have to make enough money to be able to pay for the building of the church or the school or the company or whatever. It's in it for the love of work and work in our context, clearly means that they have to get something in return. That's the bargain speaking there. So it's a very different quality that's being asked of the 40. The 40 is being asked to dedicate its willpower and the will to provide for those who need. Is it going to be correct for this person to provide for the needy or are they going to be stingy? Remember, it can go both ways. The whole thing for the 40, the whole story is earning love and will their will be dedicated to the other? Because this is now struggle with the rules of the elders or not. Are those rules going to give it what it needs, which is on the other side, part of the bargain, affection, loyalty, love, community, you know, earning its approval from the family on the other side. When we look at the first line, this is the gate of denial. Remember, deliverance, a gate of aloneness. It says, why should I? Why should I follow these stupid rules just because you said I should? I'm an ego. I have a big, fat, healthy ego. Or not. Or not. Why should I? So struggle with the rules of the elders. Or not. The struggle is to protect their ego from the work that it has to do. If it's not going to get its loyalty, its ability to have affection from the other, its just rewards so it can take its well-deserved rest, why would it do that? Think about the stomach here. The stomach 
has to digest and rest, digest and rest. It works to digest and then it rests. So there's this requirement or need that it has its just rewards. <laughs> I can remember Ra talking about if you uh, ever look into how he talks about his 40th gate, you know, he called himself the workhorse, you know, I'm the workhorse of the family. He earns his keep, that kind of thing. It has to work with the rules of the elders when it's a first line here. And the moment that that 40 makes the deal with the 37 on the other side, because that's who it's talking to, it has to work. That is part of the bargain. The 40 has to work. And that means it has to work in the first line context within the structure or rules or framework of the elders in order to support them on all the things that go with it. It's like the first commandment, honor thy mother and thy father. That's the first lines or not. That's its business. So a 40 can be hesitant here because it's very easy for 40s can, to get conditioned by 37s on the other side. Ross says that only the emotional system can get the ego to go to work, get to work. Only the 37 can do that. It is their gift. They can focus the will of the ego. And if we go back to remembering our foundation of a hexagram study, we know that the 40 is a love gate. It's a personal love gate. It's the love of work. It's a love of earning love through work, Le earning the right to be loved. That's give and take of the bargain. So it's a very conditional kind of love, isn't it? If you remember someone with the whole channel, remember they're always going to have the same exact line on the other side. You really have to look at the whole channel if they have sun, earth, or uh, nodes in this context, because it's going to be exactly polar opposite, same line, color, tone, and base, either nodally, so the environmental frequency or direction of the perspective, or it's going to be the personality awareness or their unconscious nature. When we do this, when it comes to putting the two sets of keynotes side by side to look at the relationships what that operate between them, if you're 40, 37, most of them do have the same lines. It's true because it's opposition, quite easy, quite a common to have oppositions in the wheel for definition to occur. You look at the binary theme between the two. It's important to see what the binary theme is in that connection. Now, if we think about it, oppositions in the wheel are exactly opposite of each other, aren't they? So it's quite interesting then to consider the fact that when we've got exact opposites in the wheel, you've got exact line oppositions too. So if we look at the 30th, 37th gate and the first line, respect the tradition of the elders or not, while also struggling with the rules of the elders or not, follow the tradition of the elders or not, second line struggle with the social demands of the elders or not, behave according to the elders' tradition or not, struggle with the attention of the elders or not. So third lines, you can see we're going to go into all of the other fourth, 40th gate line qualities. You see the polarity, the, the challenge inherent in having these two great arms of that cross that they bear or in the nodal environment. <laughs> My mind said, it's not fair, <laughs> but it is, you know, part of the nature of what it is to be human. So what are we dealing with here? It is what it is. And it is opposite as far as what is going on there. So no wonder there, there's, there's this tension point between the two, a tension point in the dynamic and the relationship of self with self because we're still, I want to focus on the one, two, three business here still, because we're still within it. Let's go into the two. The second line, struggle with the social demands of the elders or not. The social demands are a real struggle for a two. And the moment that you engage in the work, you have to leave your aloneness. 
You have to support others in the community because it's the call. Second lines on this path of deliverance, gate of deliverance, path of denial, are here to be called out to struggle with the demands of the elders or not, and twos are waiting to deny. They just would prefer to be aloneness, uh, alone, because aloneness is something special for a gate 40. It is a gate of aloneness. Twos don't want to be bothered. They're hermits. So there's a dynamic here where the two is waiting for the call and it is here to be called out and it's here to struggle with the social demands of the elders and that's its difficulty it's very difficult for hermits to deal with people no matter how much experience brings you specifically if this is somebody's profile to understand what that means is that the pressure of the social domain, how uncomfortable a second line being can be when it's called to the wrong thing, wrong community, wrong people. Ooh, you add on other frequencies like the fact that maybe they are a projector and social awkwardness, you know, personality wise, just like, mm -mm, no, not those people. You know, it can be a real struggle. The second line let's say, responds to if they're generative. Here to be able to recognize and be recognized for if it's projected and so forth and so on. You're looking at the pressure to commit itself to the social demands of others within the community and the tribal structure. So we're dealing with the pressure of the elders on the second line. You commit, you're a natural, do this, you know? So you've got to go to work if you're going to be a 40 and you're called. You're going to go to work within the church group. You have to help build this or guide this or advise on this. You got to do the job in order to create the money, in order to donate for this, in order to support this, whatever this is. You've got to help these people. This is your job. You know, you're here for us. Do the work. And what if it's not correct? What if they succumb to the pressure? of not being their own authority can be a real bitch, huh? If they're not clear in committing their energy. More than that, the 40 is only going to give up its aloneness if it's guaranteed the support of the other, okay? This stream circuit theme is sensitivity and it's the drive to need support. It needs support in return for its support. That's what the 40th gate is looking for. Not support in the sense of financial support, because it's not about that. Here, it's the pleasure of its need for affection being met, for loyalty, for bonding, for caring, for food, for family, for friendship, all those things that it needs. And then everything about the 40th gate says, fine, all right, I will, right? It says, I will. I will provide this. I will dedicate my will to this, my work to this, but you got to give me affection and loyalty and pleasure and touch and needs for bonding in return. Whatever that pleasure happens to be, it doesn't have to be sexual. Please understand that this is need for support and it does link to touch. But as an example, if somebody is a friend, you let them in closer and you're more likely to bond over food, to shake hands, to hug, to hold, to kiss, to love, whatever. It has to do with the feel-good system in the body, the pleasure principle of being hugged. It has to do with something very, very profound to 40s. And that happens to be loyalty. You are disloyal to a 40. And boy, they will not look resentment, yeah, in the bitterness, the extreme bitterness of energy connection. These are two energy functions as far as the emotional energy and the willpower energy. So there's a lot of um, challenge here when one is not obeyed or have been, is be when one is betrayed, when one is not obeyed or when one is betrayed, there is a lot of bad blood, you could say people who don't ever forgive, who hold a grudge, as an example. Loyalty. If you are a 4037, loyalty is always assumed, but it doesn't necessarily come to be. If you're a 40 or a 37, loyalty is something that you cannot trust, or maybe you don't trust, you just can't trust, because it's not 
inherently built in within the genetic framework. Yeah. When it comes to the dedication of your will as a 40 by itself, it's looking for something in return that it does not have. And if it doesn't sense or see or feel that touch of it being there, it's not going to give it. So what will it do? Deny. Deny. Yeah, not going to do it for you. My will is not there for you. I will not provide for you. I will or will not provide for the needy, says the 40. Gate 40, date gate of deliverance and the path of denial at the third line level. This is the material plane business. So here we have this struggle with the attention of the elders or not. Because in this gate of deliverance on the path of denial goes back to this third line theme here of understanding that the third line is seen, it's observed, it's on this material plane business. And isn't it funny when we see people messing up? Like, don't, don't we have a lot of those videos out there where people, you know, fall downstairs or they really like ski jump mishaps or whatever it is that they, um, it's usually that they, they put a laugh track on it when you're watching people hurting themselves. Now, this is on the pain point of doing it in the tribe. So everybody sees the three make the mistakes, fall down, and this is the thing that they, everybody, the elders are attuned to. Oh, how are you doing? Oh, did you mess up again? You know, it's one of the things that is done that they are seeing when they screw up or fuck up. They're observed. We are observed as threes. So humility is good for a third line, particularly here for a 40, for a defined ego being. Humility is one of those things for the third line that can really help. And this deliverance, the gate of aloneness, again, the point of transition between struggle and liberation. A calculated mode in deliverance to avoid attracting the attention of negative forces. Pluto exalts. The subtlety to enjoy deliverance without having to flaunt it. The capacity of the ego to avoid negative forces, even if it means being alone. Third line business, break the bond. Mars detriments, the ego, arrogance that demands attention and gets it. The capacity of the ego to demand attention. And so this struggle with the attention of the elders, one of the deepest martyr themes. Humility or not. Oh, they want to put this burden on my back. Why do I have to do this? Why do I have to work? I have to struggle with this attention and I don't want that attention. So run away. This is the break the bond, run away, not just walk away, run away from the tribe line. The 40.3 in the third line business, they want to get the hell out of the tribe as quickly as possible because they don't want to be watched. They don't want to be seen. They don't want to be criticized. Oh, you did it wrong again and all that business. So third line, break the bond with what does not work. If the bargain isn't good, as a bargain, if it isn't a good bargain, the attention is just going to lead to difficulties. So this struggle with the attention of the elders or not, you can see how this works now. It has a problem here, difficulties, because the bargain is not fair. And there's constantly going to be this blame business, the ramification of emotional explosions, all of the things that can occur when the bargain is not fair or the bargain, do beware, is going to break. So when it comes to a good deal, if it's a good deal, then the attention can be something quite positive because the pleasure is going to be there for the will. Remember, the will is seeking, the ego is seeking the pleasure of support. If the support is there from the elders, oh God, that feels great. You know, it can feel good. Because the emotional need-based pleasure principle, my uh, tribe loves me because I deliver. And then I get the attention. I deliver on the bargain and then I get my rewards. I get my rest. I get my money. I get my affection. I get my stomach fed. Everybody says I'm great. All right. I discovered something. You know, and this is one of the traps of a third line being in a process of trial and error because that's always the name of the game. When we have a mistake and we finally get this positive 
reinforcement of intention because that's what attention is. It's a positive reinforcement of, oh, we like this. This was good. You keep doing this. What can happen is we get carried away as threes. Instead of dedicating two hours a day in service to the tradition of the elders that they dedicate, maybe four or more non-energy type, no knowing when enough is enough, the sacral energy, mm, overwhelmment and domination of not um, living in accordance with one's truth, then we have the challenge of mm, not having enough rest because remember, ego beings have to earn their rest too. And what if they just don't know when to stop and they just keep on keeping on breaking down physically, sometimes mentally, but oftentimes non-energy type, it's physically. So Ra wants us to remember that on this path, here we have denial, on the stream of the mystical ways awakening, that tribal spirituality can go nowhere without the commitment of the 40, the 40th gate of deliverance, and its willpower. It has to have it. The essential piece of business is here. This is absolutely necessary and critical. All of it is. But this is the point between the struggle, the tension point between struggle and liberation. It's here. It's truly here. And the other thing is that the 40th gate operates in a transition field through the circuitry because of the way the mystical circuitry uh, actually functions in the spiritual process. Because you can see here, normally what happens here is the, the natural route or route would be to the 21st gate and out through the 45. The tribal material plane, the money plane, the money game, channel of materialism. Yeah? Channel of materialism. Channel of money. A design of a materialist. But not here in this spiritual process, in that forking of the paths. It doesn't go there. It goes over to the 51. And the 40 has an unusual hidden channel underneath pathway, if you could say, inside the center that moves from the 40 to the 51. Not just from the 40 to the 21. So you see elders down here with the third line, personal process, one's elders. Tribal up here with the one, two, three, sorry, elders, not third line, just all of the one, two, three, lower trigram. Tribal up here with four, five, and six, because the 40th gate has this binary, this very deep, profound binary between lower struggle and upper liberation, the trigrams, changing from not just personal to transpersonal as all hexagrams do, but it's the elders of the tribe into the tribal, tribal law or nature, or not, not we're going over leaping out of the tribe and into the void, into the higher self, into the realms of higher principles, abandoning the lower principles that saw only us versus them. Indeed, we see here, everyone is deserving of love because of the, the one awareness of I am coming to the fore. Now, this is the lower trigram pointing at the 2145. So this is the path that they tend to take. So then in the example, you take the personality, even if they don't have the gate 40, take the personality or the design, see what line, and then know that this is the tendency, okay? If they don't have a gate 40 planetary activation that you can read, that would be, you know, maybe it's what causes them to hold their breath or exhale or inhale or have some kind of um, voice or vocal quality. That's just a serendipity of their specificity, meaning their nuances and subtleties are there. Okay. That's a part of the nature of wherever it came from. Let's just think magic square. 
But if they have nothing there, they still have that gait, that tendency. Lower trigram personality is going to go over to money. Upper trigram is going to go over to the individuality. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? Lower trigram has a pointing that is less to the 51 and more over to the 45. Okay. But what if they do have this locked in, this fixedness? That fixedness in response or with awareness or however that being happens to behave, that's what's going to take them there. So do recall that there are a lot of specificities. Yeah. Each uniqueness is going to operate correctly so long as they're operating in alignment with their strategy, honoring themselves as the authority. So when you get to the upper trigram, this liberation, we're looking now at liberation themes that are going to pull it over into the individual mystical process, out of the tribe, into the realms of the higher self. In order to do that, you have to leave the tribal laws, rules, structures, obeyances behind. You have to. So at some point, remember, all of us are on this journey of awakening. Are we going to take it? Are we going to leave behind the tribal laws? Or are we going to go into our um, money trip, lower trigram, individual trip, upper trigram, which seems kind of challenging, doesn't it? As far as remember the four, five, and six, usually it's about others. What about the others? We don't want to leave them behind. But remember that this is denial. This is the gate of deliverance. So you have to leave the traditions of your elders. You must, if you want to awaken, you have to go your own way, do your own thing. When you look at any mature religions out there, there are tons of different factions. It's how you know human design has taken um, some maturity. It's gone to, through its Saturn cycle, obviously. And so now we have all these different ways. Everybody's doing their own thing, going their own way. As an example, how many different ch Christian churches are out there? All kinds of variations because... They go to their higher self and they find their own way forward. There are many paths, many paths, and you can liberate yourself from the tribal tradition without totally leaving the faith. You can still take on this uh, aspect of this or that, or you can just completely leave the faith behind. You can shift into a totally new way of being. All of that is possible with liberation as far as the gate 40, gate of denial, gate of deliverance. And the reason for that, because when you're looking at the upper trigram, you know something about upper trigrams, remember, across the channel, not just across the channel, but all the way down the line of circuitry. And in this context, because we're dealing with the stream of awakening, not only is the 40 looking across, you know, to the 37, one, two, and three, it's doing its own thing, but four, five, and six, it's looking back that way as well as turning around and looking beyond, looking beyond in the other direction. One of the interesting dynamics that is here, where the one through three is going to be impacted. And this is, we're still talking about gate 40. Lines one through three are going to be impacted by the 37. What happens when we get up here, four, two, four, five, and six knows that it's there, as in the 37 the family, the friends, the familiars, the people who give the affection in terms of the bargain. But the 40, ah, I think like Janice, it has two faces. It can look in both ways. So which way do I go? Do I stay with the family, with tradition and accept, even though it's not fulfilling for me, is the way of our community, how it's always been, is it something for me or is it there something else beyond? What is in what lies within the great beyond? This not just mystical itself, it's a bridge that carries the possibility of deliverance, deliverance from the struggle, liberations from the influence, demands, or the expectations from the elders. But what would we call oh, the wisdom keepers? That's a good word. Yeah, don't we call them wisdom keepers? Yeah, the rulers, the, the um, observers, the ones who stand as role models. 
liberation from the elders, our wisdom keepers. Well, this is the way it has always been. How do we get moved beyond? How do we get beyond? Ross says that this is a wonderful, wonderful word, deliverance, to be delivered, to be delivered out of the hands of the tribe and into whatever, God, whatever you want to call it, to go through initiation, to awaken existentially as oneself, and to the reality of the great I am, one is, one's existence. However you want to look at this journey, when we go to the upper trigram, the 40 becomes something that is very unique in the way that it operates because 40 has a special quality. Again, think like Janice. It looks both ways at the fourth, fifth, and sixth line quality. The mundane level, it goes up into the tribe because it can look not only in different directions, you know, it can go back and it can look forward in two ways. Is it going to be turned to the face of the tribe and continuing on that path of hierarchy into owning and having and money and rulership? Well, it depends on their design, right? Ordinary design analysis takes you up into the 21 because it rhymes, you know, wa circuitry 2145 with ego or um, tribal unity, you could say. It's automatically designed to go to the 21, says 40. Of course I'd go up to money. I have to provide for my family. At the most mundane level of our process, that's precisely what it would do. And yet the choice point or the shattering experience can be a turning point for 40 that has the capacity to ignore the traditions, turn its back on the family. And instead of going up into security of more money, take a risk and leap out of the tribe and into the void. You saw that in Ra where he abandoned his family. He just left. He didn't tell anybody where he was going. He just disappeared. Yeah, he went off on his own in that initiation phase of his life, that turning point suddenly, where shockingly, shock, it's a shock to turn up the back on one's family, yeah, to want to leave a legacy that is immortalized, and it's very different than just money. It's not fortune. It may be fame, though. Remember how the 40 is deeply connected to food, and these traditions being connected to ritualistic imbibing of food, bonding over food. The mouth, 37, the stomach, 40. So it's common for beings who enter into this pathway to suddenly fast rather than feast, okay? Fast to empty the stomach of its tribal contents and to go into the purging in order to emerge. So where there's this mystical jump into a different circuitry that moves beyond the 40, away from the 21, we're turning our backs on the tribe, we're leaping, we're taking the leap of faith. It's a shock. And so these people tend to go into fasting. If you've ever taken any psychedelic drugs, you know the last thing you want to do is eat. This is a shaman channel here. And those shamans, boy, do they imbibe those substances in order to find that different way, that different path. No food here. Get it all out. Clean it out. You know, the purge. If you've ever taken ayahuasca, it's just you are purging on both ends. Scrape it out of the intestines. Just get rid of it all. Get rid of all that family, familiar, food-based ritual communion. You have to purge in order to emerge. Most of the way in which we, ways in which we operate mystic, mystically and spiritually, Ross says, are just formulas. This is just one of those formulas along the path of awakening, where we see the cleaning out of the 4037, the bridge of food and family, to break that connection with the mystical channel of the, the true mystical channel of the tribe, where we have this mystical channel of the individual, that's the true initiation of into the mysteries of life with this 5125, yeah, initiation and design of needing to be first. And so then here we have the bridge 
When this bridge is down, now we have broken our connection with the old gods, the old ways, the heaviness that goes with it, all of that disappears. So when we're looking at the upper trigram here, and we're looking at the word liberation, Ra calls this a gorgeous word in this particular place, liberation. The 40, 4, 5, and 6, 4th, 5th, and 6th lines. Because, remember, there's a weakness inherent in the bridge, a weak quantum. Remember, a channel is a quantum of two gates. There's the tension point, the bridge point. So he says, as this is an opposition in the wheel, commonality for people to have this as far as beings. Yeah, lots of people have this. So channels are basically a quantum the whole that is greater than the sum of the parts. And so these two gates become more than just their line qualities. Do recall that when you're analyzing someone's chart, because you're going to get a lot of these people. Ra would call this as a low quantum or maybe even a weak quantum might be the best description because of that 40th gate, because of its dualistic construct, the binary of looking back and over to tribe or beyond, into the great beyond, and having struggle at the foundational level, and then liberation at the upper trigram, the transpersonal level. So even if you're your own 4037, you have the whole channel, your 40 could still turn its back on its children, on your own, and look over to the 51. Have you ever heard those stories about people leaving their families mm, back in the day? I don't know particular names, but there's lots of stories of people just leaving family and going off on their own. This is the way here that's breaking down, that bargain that is no longer clear. So holding on to tradition is the 37. And that, because there's a weak quantum here, this as a whole, these people, how many billions of people have this channel? It represents an incredible dilemma in their lives now, even here to this day, because the bargain is breaking down. Because part of them, the emotional part, wants to hold on to their family or tradition to be the good, whatever it is, even though they might be on the low end of their wave in relationship to it, there's still something that holds them to their tradition, holds them to family, holds them to unity. You know, seeing, let's say, um, divorce as a failure, as an example. When we look to the 40 and we look away from tradition, instead of the tribe, we look towards the 51. Now, the ego in them as a 40 this 40 deliverance business has turned its back on the arrangement or the, the bargain, the guarantee, and now is looking away from that bargain. What was supposed to be fair and balanced, it's not, you know, it's breaking down over to the 51, the shock of initiation, looking for their liberation as the 40, fourth line, fifth, and sixth lines. Remember, again, whether they have it in their design or whether it's four, fifth, and six lines in their personality or design construct. Conversely, 37s are back here praying, waiting for their traditional God to speak to them, to answer their prayers. These beings, they carry both when they have the full channel. And the solution for them is when either one side or the other wins. Ross says he hates to put it that way, but it's really true. One side or the other, which is it? Is it going to be the personal liberation of the passenger? Is it going to be the body, which is the life? Which is it? The clarity that can come without nervousness, with resolution, with confidence, has to come from alignment, correct operation through that process. Remember, there's no morality here. One side of them waiting for the prayers to be answered, for God to speak to them. The other side looking for the liberation. If God speaks to them before they're liberated, they're going to turn their back on liberation and they're going to re-embrace the tradition with their will. If, on the other hand, the liberation leads them to a place that is empowering and fulfilling for them, 
that awakens them to their individual truths, higher principles, then that will be their new bargain. And in a sense, they will forever consciously turn their back on their 37, their family. Might be their own, might be another, but they'll turn their back and you never get rid of it, says Ra. These are the beings that have deathbed conversions and all kinds of things that happen because their 37 will never get up waiting for the traditional God to speak to them, never completely give up on the hope, the dream, the faith that might that they might be eventually touched by God. Now that's thinking of the God, traditional gods that are outside of you that you pray to. Look up here, individual, the nature of being you. That is about your own sovereign truth. Remember, this channel is looking for truth. What is truth? Truth is individual. If I were to write a book, I'd like to call it that. Truth is individual. May not be a catchy title, but that would be the premise of the book. 4037, again, mystical, not really. It requires some kind of event to open up its possibility of turning one's back on tradition. So let's say you've got a, a parent whose child has died. Nothing like death to, to turn one's back on you know, family. Maybe they're just a single parent and then no more family. I'm never getting married again. I'm going to devote myself to God. You know, going to find my individual awakening. Ra wants it to be really understood that it does not mean that 4037s and the 40 in the 4037 do not have this capacity and are locked to the demands of the 37. Quite frankly, it's not, it's just not, it's just simply not so. But again, it takes the event to trigger these things. Maybe you got fired. It doesn't have to be mystical. It can be tragedy, all kinds of things. Sometimes Something happens in the life and suddenly opens up this possibility of turning one's back here on the fears of holding a traditional roles. Can we be liberated? We remember that the point of human design is to liberate the passenger from choice in order to see clearly. So rather than caught up in morality, good people do this, I'm right if I do that, right, wrong, should would, have to, must, all of that stuff that is indoctrinated in us through our media, through our, um, you know, upbringing, our schooling, all that we can let go of, or can we? It depends. What's your reality? That holding on to tradition and looking for liberation and the break in the dedication to one's family, all of this comes with an enormous price because there's going to be a huge conflict within someone. The big price within oneself is that there's always this challenge, this struggle, this fight until one side wins. And the moment that one side wins, then there isn't the same kind of dilemma. Ross says, there's no more dilemma. Can you imagine for most beings who carry this channel, being caught both ways, one's, let's say, their conscious awareness, one is what's grounding. Because the channel has a weak quantum, those two linger as kind of separate qualities that won't merge completely into the quantum of the channel. So that there's this tension point, this duality, this conflict inherent within now, as we go to the upper trigram, we have the fourth line, which says liberation from the influence of the tribe or not. So we have the fourth line liberation of the influence through the gate 40, path of denial. And we have the fourth line influence, the maintaining of tribal tradition through the gate of the family, the sphere of tradition. See the dynamic there? Liberation from the influence, fourth line. Denial, gate, 40th gate, fourth line, denial. And the fourth line, influence the maintain, maintenance of the tribal tradition. And that's very interesting. There you see the exact opposite polarity through the line quality even, where the 40 
The 3740 will influence the tribe to maintain its traditions. Yet the 40, the fourth line, there's a part of it that would love to be liberated from that influence. So there's the inherent polarity or the challenge within. My God. This is which side are you going to be pulled to? It depends on the nature of you. Are you going to be refocused on the 37, which is the natural perspective of the 40? naturally? Or are you going to turn your back, turning into the wind, suddenly you're facing the possibilities of true liberation? Are you going to leap out of the tribe and into the void? Maybe. Ross says, the other thing that in seeing the keynote of liberation in these upper lines, it's important to understand the upper lines of the 40 always feel in one way or another oppressed by their obligations, by the influence of the tribe on their life, the expectations. So as an example, you've got a young one growing up and she's told, no, you cannot marry this one. No, they don't make enough money. Or no, you cannot do that. You cannot go to that school. They don't believe the same things as we. It's not correct to do this. It's not correct to do that. So the challenge here, they're looking for liberation from the influence Liberation from the demands, fifth line. Liberation from the elders, wisdom keepers, sixth line. When we look at the five, this is the demands of the tribe that they're wanting deliverance from in this path of denial. Denying the family, denying the fear of tradition or holding traditional roles. So in the fifth line, friendship, family, loyalty, bonding, trust, this 37th gate, we have the devotion to the tribal tradition or not. And think about this devotee, this total devotion to the tradition and the dream of being part of a family. Remember the channel name, a design of finding one's place, seeking and finding one's place within the context of the greater whole. So on the other end, 40 says, shit, that's a lot of work to be devoted. I want to be liberated from the demands of the tribe. That's a real burden. Why should I be burdened in that way? I don't want to super slave away. You know, there's all that underneath. What if the bargain isn't fair? Or what if they're bitter? You know, they're not uh, correct in one's bonds. It doesn't mean like the or not is always coming to an end, but in most cases, the or not is actually first here with the gate 40, line five. So I hope that that is clear. I'm going to say it again in a different way. Normally, what happens is we do it or not. You know, the or not is like an afterthought. If we were to change the slide here, we put the, the no liberation from the demands of the tribe. That comes first because you're like stuck in it. Oh, I've got a super slave. I got married, you know, love, honor, and obey and all this business. And I got to take care of my children. They're little. What are they going to do? Got to make sure I work hard, work for the family, feed the family. My dad was one of these as far as the full uh, channel. So when you look at that full channel, they have to experience this, I'm not liberated from the demands. And then on the flip side, Liberation from the demands. Divorce usually ends the game hmm? where they get um, joint custody or not, you know, and they don't have the same kind of commitments. When we're dealing with the not self world, we're dealing with the power of the mental game of people laying blame, whether on self or others. So under the 37th gate influence, it's very, very difficult for a 40 to find their liberation because the 20, 37, it's emotional blame game trip can be very um, sticky. Remember, blood is thicker than water, very graspy, you know, holding them like flypaper. It doesn't mean that it isn't there under their skin, Ross says, that they don't feel the demands of the tribe, this gate 40, line five. 
This is a projection though. Remember that fifth lines get projected upon. So if the tribe projects onto you that you're not as devout as you should be, oh boy, are you ever in trouble. The things that you will have to do to make up for it so that you can maintain your legitimacy, your respect within the community, your reputation of what it is that you can deliver on, these are the ones that so easily will, if the moment is there, turn their back on the tribe and seek liberation from those demands from the projection field of the others. Ah, I'm out of here. See ya, says the five. And when we get to the sixth line, Ra loved this one. This is liberation from the elders of the tribe or not. He says it's so interesting. If we go and compare it with the 37th gate of the family, fear of tradition, and the sixth line, the value of tribal tradition or not. This 37.6 doesn't really care about the reward system of getting something back from God for your devotion. It just sees the value of tradition and being able to maintain the tribe and the community. And in many ways, this is about maintaining power. Okay, power. Think power here particularly when you're looking at the history of tribes that had to defend themselves against other tribes. There was solidarity, there was loyalty. It was enormously important in our tribal development because we had to either outnumber or outsmart or outbuild or outsucceed other tribes because it threatened our continuity, our ability to continue on um, to strengthen and grow. Because remember, the sixth line is looking beyond. It's looking at the whole line of circuitry. What's ultimately going to be of support? So they value the tribal tradition more than people. Ooh, that can seem quite cold. Look at the sixth line of the gate of deliverance, the gate of aloneness, and this decapitation. Remember, this is the point of transition between struggle, lower trigram, and liberation, upper trigram. This is upper trigram. So the sixth line, liberation from the elders of the tribe or not, we're learning about here, the necessary destruction of inferior forces in positions of power before liberation can take place. Sun exalts the authority coupled with the magnanimity to remove from power only those which deserve such drastic treatment. The power and authority of the ego to eject individuals in legitimate defense of the group. You see the sun exalting and the earth detrimenting. That means then these people with gate 40 in their incarnation cross are going to absolutely have the juxtaposition always and in all ways. Earth detrimenting reads, exemplified by the terror of the French Revolution, where the idea of who was deserving of punishment was cruelly extended to an entire class. In other words, the distortion of the ego through power and authority. This is liberation from the elders of the tribe. So it can show up like killing the priests and replacing them with other priests. It can be quite savage in the way that it operates, decapitation. In other words, let's kill people, but we'll keep the tradition. The part of the Catholic Church in its history, basically what it did, that's something there in the six. I'm sure there's other religions. It's just that Ra didn't mention that. I imagine Darshana would know. She studied um, religious studies in college. The other side of that is something deeply profound and mystical. Look at this sentence here, or fragment, I guess, statement. Liberation from God itself. At the deepest and most profound level, this 40th gate of deliverance, the path of denial, is liberation from needing God. Why? Because thou art God. God's authority, the authority that's been embodied within the elders and the tribal rulers and the way of the tribe and the God of, you know, killing beings. This is now, instead of killing beings, it's killing God. It's getting rid of God. You don't need God. Thou art God. The sixth line, if you look at all six lines, remember they resonate with wisdom, but it takes a long time, a, a long year 50 years, de decades, um, 
five decades, 50 years to get there to this maturity level. If we look at it just from the philosophical approach to understand the nature of what it is to be a role model, role models can only be correct on their own authority. So that means then they cannot follow the tradition of the elders, even if it harmonizes you know, with what they want. They have to be their own authority. They cannot follow the authority of what the tribe say so is. They can't. They have to separate. Remember, this was the pressure to separate when we looked at the gate uh, 19, pressure to separate. They still cannot accept the authority of the elders or the authority of the tribe or even the authority of God. They have to be correct in their own authority. Now, think about this as far as where we're going into the new era, the new age. Everybody being conditioned to that resonance of the sixth line. Be a correct role model of one's own authority. And you do that mechanically. Happily for us, we know what to do in order to find ourself that is true. This is the magic, the liberation from this mystical, spiritual trap that is a part of what it is to be homo sapiens and transitus. The mutation in this time that we're in, it's really what it's all about as far as the sixth line representing this deep liberation, the separation from that spiritual, <laughs> spiritualizing. You see that in the world around us, how many religions there are just completely um, explosion of many different mystical ways and paths. So you're liberated from the game when you're aware that you are beyond compare, that the darkness and the light, they are one and the same. You can fill the darkness with light, and all of a sudden, all is light, and there is no God. That this is the way things truly work when you see the patterns at play, when you watch it, the mechanism that is there. This is not about God, because you are God. Thou art God. Liberation from the elders of the tribe or not is something that's deeply profound because this is where we find our liberation out of the tribe and into individual higher knowing of selfhood. Selfhood, higher self. Not everybody is going to turn that way. Not everybody can. They might have the material way at play and what to do. It is what it is. But for a six on its mystical journey, the 40 will turn its head to the 51 eventually. It may be a shock or may take some time. But part of the 40th gate in the sixth line has a need to kill God. Now, that sounds quite heretical. Ra oftentimes would be shocking. To preface it or to explain it, I would like to say killing the concept of an external God. You know, not blaspheming. Ra was <laughs> not a believer, so he couldn't blaspheme. Mechanically, he was a mechanic of human design, the mechanism of choicelessness, and that we are programmed to be either broadcasting or to receive this as part of the mystical journey. So interesting to think about, hey? This channel of tribal spirituality. When we start within this process of understanding all of these things from the context of religion. Here in the 3740 is the ultimate search for God. That's where it's nurtured. That's where it's birthed as far as the support, you know, the growth, the feeding of that touch for God, that prayer to find God, not just then eventually liberation from tradition, but liberation from having to seek outside of oneself for truth. Not having to go and ask mom or dad or auntie or uncle or sister or brother or cousin or teacher for what do you think? What should I do? You know? No, oh, coming back to the truth inherent inside. Ross says the irony, of course, is that there is truth for each of us. There is a truth in that living correctly as ourselves and honoring our strategy and authority. We are truth. 
And ultimately, our spiritual destiny is to be truth.